Welcome back to the studio. I bet your guess. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio. I bet you're surprised to see me here. We are going to be working today on finishing up another tidbit from my past. This is Santa's Little Helper Elf's Special Delivery. So uh, last week when I went to the local quilt shop, I got some back uh, some background fabric but I also got some border fabric I picked up this little dot fabric which is also going to be the backing for this um, I haven't threaded the machine yet I'm going to be doing probably a very light colored thread uh, probably a light lavender to me lavender is the gray of the color world so um, I'll probably use a light lavender um, it'll pick up all the other colors and there is some purple in here as well the uh, panto that I'm going to be using is called Gingham Plaid Elongated. But again today I'm going to show you that you can load a quilt sideways uh, horizontally. I'm going to be loading it this way and um, the thing that you have to pay attention to is is the panto you're using directional. And in fact this particular panto is directional. Um, it does have a slightly different look vertically than it does horizontally, but I actually like the look of it horizontally, uh, which is different from the way that it was designed. It actually mimics the shape of the packages better on its side than it does going the way it was normally designed. So it's working in my favor. So I'm going to show you what the design looks like on the table before I go to the machine. Um, that way I can go ahead and program the design all the way in the back left corner uh, so that you don't have to see me do that part of it. The other thing that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do a little bit differently than normal. Normally I want my batting to go all the way to the edges of my backing and I like to do that so that as the quilt is rolling up the edges of the quilt backing are full. It's not getting loose because there's no batting there in that section and that way my tension is correct all the way as I roll. Um, I don't mind using that extra bit of batting for that purpose but in this case there really isn't going to be a lot of rolling up because uh, the quilt is loaded this way isn't that long. Uh, and also I'm trying to use up some scraps. So I found a scrap that is just barely big enough to go underneath the top and that's what I'm using today. So you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way to the edges um, and that's fine with me today for this purposes. Um, but I wanted to make it clear why I'm switching it up today. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the design that I'm using and the difference uh, vertically and horizontally. Then I'm going to swap out my thread and get the uh, quilt spray basted and then I'm going to top uh, stitch basted on the top and sides and get it ready to stitch. Come join me. Okay we have gingham plaid elongated by Patricia Ritter. The size on this is nine, nine and a quarter and this is what it would normally look like but I'm going to be running it this way because um, I like the way that the squares are horizontal on here. It matches more of the stacked packages. But also, um, that way, uh, this is what it's going to look like because I'm uh, reversing the way that the quilt is loaded. I'm loading my quilt horizontally so that uh, once it's taken off the frame, it'll be flipped. It will look like that. I also mentioned that I used 505 and I'll show you uh, how I uh, utilize that when I turn the camera around. A lot of times I will use 505 just as an extra set of hands. So once I get the backing pinned to the uh, leader, I will go ahead and give a little squirt of the 505 on the wrong side of the backing and that just helps me get the batting flat and then I can run a basting stitch across the top. The basting stitch is a straight line because I've run it along the back bar so I know it's a straight line. And then I can use that straight line basting stitch 
to align my quilt top. And again, I'll just use this uh, quick spray of the 505 to keep my quilt top perfectly flat as I'm basting that down. And a lot of the times I might even do that again at the bottom. Now 505, as it says, is a temporary spray adhesive. So don't expect it necessarily to be uh, lasting uh, six months or more. Now, if you tuck it away wrapped up, um, it may be uh, still stuck and also on batting because it's a really uh, clingy surface it's going to be uh, stickier than a flat surface so if you're spraying something like on a countertop uh, it's probably not it's going to not stick as long but batting will have a tendency to stick longer because it's a, a very porous surface but anyway i have the uh, 505 sprayed on there. I've used the basting stitch to get the quilt top basted in place and the batting. So now I'm ready to go ahead and load my quilt design. This will be pretty easy. I'm going to use Design Sew Quilt, Start New. I'm going to erase the work in progress and reset my clock. I'm going to use a pantograph and I'm going to enter the rectangle manually. This is uh, 44 inches, but I'm adding an inch on each side for good measure, so that's 46, enter. It's 30 inches high or wide, but it's high on here. So I'm gonna put 32, just for good measure, and enter, and you can see my quilt representation on the screen. So I can hit enter, and I'm gonna to go to my downloads, and hit G for gingham uh, plaid. I'll bring that in twice for the even and odd rows. And you can see with the gap how separate this design is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit gap and bring this down until this is completely interlocked. And as it stands, there's only uh, three and a quarter rows here. But also the pattern height is at 18.75. And it's only supposed to be nine and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that until we get down to nine and a half, nine and a quarter, somewhere around there. Once I'm happy with the size, I'm gonna bring it to nine and a quarter. That's the close. So I've got it close to nine and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. And my transition type is continuous. I'm going to accept that. And I'm going to go ahead and program it to uh, do the panto sequencing for the whole quilt. So to do that, I'm going to hit sew quilt, select the first pattern, continue. Select Panto Sequencing. I want to alternate the rows. I want to tie off in between and do the whole quilt. And now it's alternated each of the rows in a slightly different color green. But this way, if I have to quit for any reason, I've already sequenced the whole quilt and it's a little bit easier to shut down and pick up the quilt as a work in progress the next time, uh, the next day or, or whatever. So I like to do that always when I'm doing a quilt. It only takes a few seconds. So I can hit Sew Quilt. Normally when I do quilting, I have my batting go all the way over to the backing. 
That way when I roll up the quilt, this part does not become loose because this is fuller than this. I don't want this to become loose as I quilt because then this is not under tension. Um, there is a way to prevent that if you don't have the batting all the way to the edge and that is to keep batting strips that you could feed in along the two edges and keep this taunt. I just like to keep this at an evil t even tension as I go. But because I'm not going to be rolling this quilt up as much, um, I only have probably one roll on this whole process, I wasn't worried and I wanted to use the batting scrap so I cheated a little bit today. I have the two sides basted to a point, but there's a little bit of wrinkly and puckering here. So I'm going to lift this up and I'm just going to uh, spray the batting a little bit at the bottom with a little bit of the 505. I just like this because it just gives me a, a little bit of, it's almost like ring, uh, ironing. I could kind of press with my hand out. and it kind of gets those wrinkles out and now when I baste it'll baste it nice and smooth and I feel like I'm doing a better job Now I'll repeat this process on the other side. <clears throat> Clearly I have one more roll up to do on the other side as well. Because I can't get all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to take it back to manual, I'm going to realign. And I have to re-thread too. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to realign right to that point. And now I'm ready to start stitching again. short process this whole quilt was only about 28 minutes so uh and I like the echoing of the package shape in the quilting pattern
Look how beautiful it is. Something about that reminds me of the Brady Bunch. Anyway, less than 30 minutes. The whole thing is finished. And I'm gonna see if I can get a close up of my needle. I want you to notice there's no gum on there, no gumming on the needle. If you fuse properly with steam, moisture, and heat, uh, you'll notice that there's no adhesive left to come out from the steam seam too. So if you're getting a lot of gumming on your needle when you're quilting or top stitching, it's all down to the fusing process. You'll see that my needle's clean. I didn't clean it off before I showed you this. Uh, and that all comes down to the fusing process. If you fuse properly while you're at that stage, you won't have gummy on the needle. Ta-da! Santa's little helper elf special delivery. And we quilted it with gingham plaid elongated. I did quilt it on the horizon and then I switched it to the vertical. So we hear this all the time about uh, <clears throat> can you quilt either way and the answer is yes. I like the way that um, the little quilting boxes match the size of the uh, packages. Certainly could have changed the size of that. And also something to think about, notice that this is a Christmas applique but I didn't use a Christmas quilting pattern at all and I didn't use anything floral or holiday it's just a nice geometric and it brings uh, matches the pattern beautifully so uh, I think all of those things worked really good this is another one I'll be glad to get up in the studio uh, but I have a lot of bindings to get put on and sleeves and my friend is going to really be uh, flabbergasted when she sees the pile but also I don't know what I'm gonna do soon because I'm running out of wall space I've made so many samples well it's not just samples I've made so many videos since COVID <clears throat> we really amped up the production of videos I remember in the beginning I didn't want to be in the videos at all the videos were less than, well, they were single take videos. I didn't know how to edit. And I didn't know how to do anything other than a single take. And I didn't want to be in them at all, so I was just using my finger at a point. Um, but we were, we, we were just doing a couple of videos on how to do a panto. Uh, so we started doing videos every, every week. And I thought, we'll run out of ideas. We'll run out of things to do in a month. But I know we have over probably 340 videos posted now uh, where they just keep coming. So we have also uh, quilt samples hanging. We have quilt samples draped all over everything back there. And so I'm running out of room. Uh, and so I'm headed to a stage where I'm going to have to really do another big clean up in here and come up with a storage solution where I can hang multiple things uh, uh, easily. So that's my dilemma. I don't know what your dilemma is. But thanks for joining me today. This one's wrapped up. Uh, we wrapped up both the applique and the quilt. I just have to put my uh, binding on it and get that finished. So I've got another one ready to put on. I've got about four or five tops that I have to get done in quick succession so I can move on to another big project. So thanks for joining me in the studio today. I look forward to uh, having you join me again next time. If you have any questions, please comment in the comment section. Um, if you would be so kind, like or subscribe, uh, share uh, with some of your friends because that helps other people see the videos. And take care of yourself and take care of each other.